All right, so this is a uh, audio commentary for the game No Moral, a game that I've made for the um, Twisted Tales event. Uh, it won first place and it got featured on RMN, which is pretty cool. I decided to just provide some post-mortem commentary on the game's development, just so that I don't forget one day, you know? So yeah, the initial idea was to actually make an RPG Maker game in Game Maker, essentially. Um, due to the theme of the event and what the, you know, it was like Halloween, I guess. Well, it was, it was it Twisted fairy, fairy Tales, but it was Halloween at that time. So I was like, you know, I'll do a, a scary horror game involving fairy tales. Um, and, but I, I kind of initially was like, I kind of want to do a contemporary kind of Resident Evil mansion horror game. Uh, and I just sort of wedged in a fairy tale narrative or analog to the whole thing so so i guess i really liked narrative and then story that a lot of rpg maker games offer um but when you start out in game maker you're kind of making these little action games that don't have any kind of st story or narrative um taking place i mean you could do text easily but it's like you know like an nes game or something where you only have like like an intro of some sort and that's it um, I wanted like actual cutscenes with dialogue boxes and letter by letter, like typewriter kind of stuff that you'd normally get for free in RPG Maker, but in Game Maker you kind of have to build that yourself. It took me about a week to make all of these cutscenes, and also while learning how to make a cutscene, what was the best practice and what was the best method, and I actually found it was actually easier than in RPG Maker. Um, to make cutscenes just because of the way um, paths and and timelines work although I've kind of dropped timelines and developed my own timeline system for Game Maker like basically programmed it um, but yeah once you get it going it actually becomes easier you can do anything you want actually you can have it have like a sequence play out like depending if the the character actually reaches a spot because in RPG Maker you have no idea where the character is most of the time you have to kind of like count out the steps, the number of steps they take in, and then you test play the cutscene and see if they, where they are, or if the timing's correct, or whatever. But in Game Maker, you, you can just say like, if the character reaches this spot, then stop the pathing or whatever. Or you can just you're you're drawing the path anyway, so it doesn't even matter. Um, there's a lot of small little tricks that makes everything so much easier. Like that that part in the save room where you reach the middle of the room and you trigger a cutscene. And then she moves towards the um, the cassette uh, deck thing. That was purely programmed. That wasn't like sequence. Like I have no idea where the the character is when the cutscene starts. So I just programmed it so that she would move towards a spot and 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 start the next like dialogue box if she reaches that point. So I I should actually talk about the gameplay of this game. <laughs> I spent so much time talking about fucking cutscenes, but um. So yeah, what I'm doing is I'm kind of actually doing something what most players don't actually do, which is um, go backwards into the previous um, room because you get a key that can unlock multiple doors. Most keys can unlock most doors, but um, you get some extra stuff in this little kitchen area place uh, if you explore, basically. Very few people got this, got this area, but it's actually interesting to see like the personality types that typically do go back to here um yeah the goal of the game is to basically find and kill all the monsters in the mansion um which is an I interesting goal i guess uh, and usually it's just for most horror games it's just like get to the end and survive but this game's a little more a little more aggressive it's a little more combat focused than than i was expecting it to be but it was actually like the fastest way to design a wooden condition is it just have it so that like oh yeah if you kill everything in the mansion then the ending cutscene triggers I guess at some point this is the part where you first encounter your first uh, enemy and, uh, and I'm kind of going by the don't show your monster in the first 30 minutes rule that a lot of horror movies go by but in this case it's four minutes but <laughs> um, but there's there's a, like a lot of build up and, and, and premise behind it and you know making sure that like Okay, well, I don't don't put the monster in the screenshots of the game. Don't advertise what what exactly you're going up against. Um, just keep it a secret until the actual moment where you're fighting a monster. Um, 
I I'm don't I don't know if this was I didn't know at the time even if this was like scary, but I really like the idea of just having the monster come in in the gameplay during the time you have full control because in a cutscene there you don't have that tension of of anxiety of have needing to do something at at the right time like if 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 you get in a car crash or something or if you're about to get into a car crash in real life there's this moment to moment like oh my god i need to do something do i do something here do i how do i get out of this situation kind of thing that you wouldn't get if you were witnessing um someone else get into a car crash i mean i guess you would get some anxiety of like oh shit should i call 911 or what like what what do i do um but yeah, like I just think this was pretty effective actually for a lot of people. Like a lot of people that let's played the game on on YouTube were pretty freaked out about it. And so the enemy design was basically it actually took a very long time, probably like a I'd say almost a week and a half just to program the AI and just figure out how it can tr make the most efficient path towards you. But there's some glitches in in its pathing where. It might go around a spot when it doesn't need to or something like that um or it might run past you um it's because it's actually checking um the next place to go every time every time it reaches the end of its own path which actually doesn't look that bad in, as a result but it's kind of hiccupy in areas and i'm like you know what i should just keep checking for where the hero character is um and and find find them that way basically but anyway it kind of works out um I think what was also good about it was like the dive animation was like kind of well made like incidentally which is an accidentally kind of forces you to move out of the way a lot even though you're like kiting them and shooting them constantly um I thought the dive just the idea to have a dive in there kind of made the combat a little more dynamic so this is me like speed running my own game but like playing the game for the first time in like months so I actually made a huge mistake, which was I used the, I kind of went the wrong route because the way the mansion is built is that it's sort of um, basically like I wanted you to be able to backtrack to the kitchen room to get the extra stuff early on, which I demonstrated before. But it's basically there's two silver key doors, two doors that you need a silver key um, from later. But there's two ways to get the silver key after an initial point. Um, and I picked the wrong door that just simply loops me back to where I'm going anyway. So it's actually better to back, instead of going outside, it's better to backtrack back to the closet room or the storage room or whatever and unlock the silver key door that takes you upstairs. That's actually a faster route. Um, but it's interesting to just see how that, this mansion layout sort of, like, it's all incidental. I just wanted you to be able to, like, backtrack to the kitchen and then I needed a way for you to lock you out of going any further so that you would meet the first enemy so i came up with a new key because this is all like this is kind of like legend of zelda where you have this sort of universal key system and then you have a boss key that's unique to a door but i realized the problem with the system is that you can't it's harder to direct the flow of the backtracking as much so i was like well i need to come up with a brand new key i need to come up with the ancient key which isn't that special but it's like like i wanted you to be able to only use it at a certain point basically um it could have been it could have easily been a silver key actually now that i think about it but it also establishes like an interesting landmark of like oh i remember an ancient door this is an ancient key so uh-huh you know um there's actually no puzzles in this game other than just figuring out the layout of the mansion which i think is actually good because i feel like for a small game such as this, um, I think puzzles would have been a little bit distracting from... The real puzzle of the game is killing the enemies and doing it in such a way that it's um, efficient. And also navigating the layout at the same time to know where all the extra resources are and whatnot. So this is a really interesting situation I'm in. Um, I'm at like almost like no health because I'm bad at my own game. <laughs> Um, so I actually came up with this idea to like, oh, what if I just like backtrack to this, um, the hole that I fell into? Because basically, um, in a cutscene, you, you fell through the hole, right? And I just added a, like, well, what if you return to the hole? Like, what can you do with the hole? Like, well, it could just be a, a one-way, um, area you could go down. So that was sort of, I just like, I realized like, oh, this is actually kind of useful. So I don't have to like backtrack to where the enemies are i could probably avoid the enemies but i was just like i'm gonna be super safe and look for a health pack somewhere this way because i don't know but it's just really interesting 
that I didn't really have a huge purpose to why you can go back down the hole, other than I guess it's just interesting. That is a one-way kind of thing. You can't go back up the hole, right, like a door. Um, but in this exact situation, it actually helped me a little bit to know how the mansion is laid out and where to get the help pack and whatnot. Though I, I think I go the wrong way to find the help pack, so... <laughs> So there's a lot of problems with this game. Um, I'd say the first one is probably the inventory management is a bit weird. Basically, the item that you currently have swapped with the one on the ground, which actually makes it useful for um, uh, storing items. Because basically, uh, in Resident Evil, you can only pick up the item or leave it there or put it into a storage. But in this game, you can leave an item anywhere you want as long as there's an item there in the first place, if that makes any sense. Uh, it took me a while to actually figure out how to program in a way for items to remember what items were left on the ground because each item in the room has an initial item that was set by the designer but then if you swap the item with the item in your inventory that changes so the the game is remembering what that specific item and its item id is assigned to but it was an interesting learning experience uh, actually knowing how to do that it's actually this exact same programming as how locked doors work i guess you could say it switches but it's actually a little more like you're assigning a name or a value to something um than its initial one that's remembering and then also figuring out how to apply that to save data is also kind of fun but yeah the inventory system i think i would just change completely and rethink because not a whole lot of people used this whole like store items on the ground kind of system as a makeshift way of like oh i need this item over this item but i guess maybe in a more longer game it would be more useful or or something like that but um also the aiming in this game is kind of bad because basically so okay so the actual basically when you fire a gun it draws a line between the gun and the end of the camera or, or screen or whatever so since the center of the enemy is going towards the center of the player which i believe is at her feet um the gun the origin of the gunshot is in a different position so it's actually so when the monster is going towards you you can easily miss because it's just not balanced in a particular way <laughs> So I think the the best way is actually just have the gun's origin the same as your your the character's origin, but just have the visuals um, the, the same way as I have it in this game. But yeah, all right. So let's talk about the end of the game or the non-ending, I should say. Um, so a lot of people didn't. It's probably like the biggest complaint was like the ending was a little unexpected or anticlimactic it just sort of you you basically shoot the great mother or snow white in this case a spoiler warning by the way uh <laughs> and then like the game just ends abruptly so I'm, I'm not gonna excuse myself or anything but this game was made in a month and all the game was the love all the levels like were made in a probably like three or four days like <laughs> like it was actually being con the game was actually being made in the last four days of development after it had like all the gun system and the inventory management and the cutscenes and all that stuff together um and then i had to figure out how to do save game save data uh, in like the la the very last day and then i was like oh shit i need an ending for this game because i did come up with the the, the torches sort of lighting up at the last minute as well it was like okay i just need a quick way to end the game or trigger a win state basically and if you return to the to the brazers or the the torches or whatever um the game basically ends um and then i was like well do i have a final boss like i i could just reuse another enemy but that would just be kind of boring or whatever um and i don't think there's a way to have multiple enemies just because of the way i set it up so that was also a bummer too so just like you know what? i'll just have this symbolic ending and hope that people will take from it because like i don't know does every every game need a final boss i don't i don't know um but i think i think the feedback was really useful because people do care about a good ending like a good like maybe there didn't need to be a final boss per se but just like a cut scene to just see you know what happens after that or, or just some kind of like finale or, or satisfaction of completing the game but Oh yeah, there's this little section that I'm showing off. All these little tables and stuff. Um, you are actually going to fight Kyle. Um, Kyle like is represents a huntsman, so he goes insane and kind of like in the Snow White tale, you 
you would actually fight him because you're actually the bad guy in the original fairy tale technically um oh yeah i'm like spoiling the whole interpretation of the fairy tale thing but um yeah you're gonna fight him in this in this area and it'd be kind of like he would have like a crossbow or something and um yeah like this whole section was actually planned out for this whole like like almost metal gear solid like boss fight kind of thing but didn't get time to do it um which is a shame but you know that's almost every game project goes for that so you know anyway thanks for listening to my commentary um yeah i just thought i'd i do post some thoughts before i forget and um yeah i hope you enjoyed it thanks for listening bye